Hello, uh, welcome to another session of uh, the Houdini training. My name is Gianvito Serra and today we're going to be looking at components of geometries in Houdini. So we're going to talk a little bit about how geometries in Houdini are made and actually generated uh, in, uh, and a little bit about, uh, you know, what each of the components are and how do they work, okay? So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and start with a piece of geometry, okay? We'll go ahead and actually start with a primitive sphere, okay? We'll go ahead and go inside of it and we'll set it to polygons since it's the one of the primitives that we're most familiar with, okay? Okay, so people coming from other applications are familiar with the concept that geometry is uh, has components, okay? So you may have an object like a sphere or a torus or anything like that, and they will have different components such as vertices, such as polygons, etc., etc. Uh, if you're coming from Maya, this should be very familiar. Verts, uh, edges, faces uh, are the way how the components that actually make a piece of geometry. <clears throat> For the purposes of this training, I am going to use terminology that is uh, Houdini specific because it's, uh, it is very important to understand the terminology to be able to understand the paradigms behind the geometry. Okay? So, if we look at the sphere, we will notice that some of the familiar elements of geometry are in there as well. And I'm going to hide the grid so we can see it a little bit better. But for example, we have points, okay, which we're familiar with. Notice that in Houdini they're actually called points, they're not called vertices, and I'll explain that in a second why. We also have faces, which in Houdini we refer to as also primitives. So if we actually come here and I roll over this, you will see that we have our faces here, in this, uh, also known as primitives. If we come over here, we can also switch to points, and you can see we have our points here. Okay. Now in addition to that, we also have in Houdini what is called vertices. Okay. Now, vertex in Houdini is different than a point uh, in, in a very interesting way, which I'll explain. Before I explain, though, I want to show you another thing. So we learned a little bit uh, on the last video about being able to middle mouse to see the level that has information, okay? So the one thing that we will see in here is that we have uh, information about the geometry when we hold the middle mouse button, such as the number of points, the number of primitives, the number of vertices, and the number of polygons, okay? Uh, and also, as well as bounding box information and attributes, which we'll learn about in later lessons, okay? Now, there is a now the the what I like to start explaining is a little bit of the difference between point and vertices. Okay, so points are basically points in space. Okay, they simply represent a position in space, and they can carry more information other than that, of course. But for the most part, for the purposes of this sphere, they just represent the points that make the sphere. Okay, if we go to wireframe, we can see that the points are actually, the points are basically just making the form of a sphere. Uh, unlike most applications, in Houdini, we can also have a mesh that is only made out of points. So if we come here and put a scatter up, as in scattering points, you will notice that now we have a mesh that is only points. Okay, and if we middle mouse here, you will notice that we have 1,000 points, no primitives and no vertices, okay? So in other applications, this may be a little bit like particles, but Houdini makes no distinction in between particles and points. They're in essence the same, okay? Very cool. I'll switch this back to primitives, so the next part. Now you can even see that points will even render on their own 
without you having any primitives in your mesh. Okay, so let me delete this scatter node and we can go back to our shear. Go back to shared mode as well and bring our smooth wire shader. Okay, vertices are the are the basically the points which make a triangle okay they don't carry the position they simply carry information about how a primitive is connected okay so if we look at the if we look over here we should be able to even display the vertex markers okay so you can see that for this triangle right here we have one one vertex here one vertex here and one vertex here. You can even look at them a little bit closer by clicking on this and see them over here. So that way, that way it doesn't, doesn't get in the way of being able to see. In If you come from other applications, this may be akin to what UVs are, where a polygon, you know, a UV, you can have two UVs per point, okay? In Houdini, though, the concept is much more abstract, okay? Uh, it actually, if you come from Maya, is very comparable to vertex faces, okay? And it's a thing that allows us to have, for example, hard edges. It's the thing that allows us to have uh, color seams uh, in between your geometry, and so on and so forth. Okay? Now, so there is a ve that's a very important difference to understand. Okay, and to show it a little bit further, I'm going to right click on the node and open the spreadsheet. Okay, the geometry spreadsheet is a data viewer where you can see information from your components. Okay, so you will see that for the points, which is what we have here, we have all the point positions. Okay, if we look at the vertices, on the other hand, you will notice that there is no positions, but instead, what we have is the point number that the vertex is associated with. Okay. As we actually modify the data of the actual sphere, you will notice that the data in the parameter spreadsheet or the polygon or geometry spreadsheet actually changes too, showing us how to very how to you know the data changes on the fly. Now, think of the geometry spreadsheet as another viewer. Okay, if Houdini, for example, if you change some data and the geometry spreadsheet has to update. Houdini will actually has make the cook happen in order to be able to show the geometry here, okay, the updates. Now, going a little bit further, let's talk a little bit about primitives or polygons. Okay, I know this is a particular topic that can confuse a lot of people. So I'll try to uh, give some examples of what I refer to. So if we middle mouse again on the actual sphere, you will notice that we have 80 primitives and 80 polygons. So the first question that I always get is, what is the difference in between them? Why do we have 80 primitives and 80 polygons, okay? So Houdini is one of the only, uh, pretty much the only application where every different primitive type is, ma is handled as a first class citizen, okay? So the reason why when we middle mouse here we have 80 primitives and 80 polygons is because every polygon inside of this sphere is actually considered a primitive, okay? If we look, for example, and if we come over here, for example, and create a new sphere, okay? And we leave it as a primitive sphere type, okay? Which is basically just a point in space that tells the OpenGL renderer to actually draw a sphere, okay? You will notice that we have only one point, which is the center of the sphere, and one primitive, okay, which is the sphere itself, and the primitive and one sphere, okay, which is the primitive type, okay. So here is a big difference. If we come here, we have 80 primitives and 80 polygons. Prim 80 is 80 primitives, and 80 of them is of a polygon primitive type, okay. Come here, we only have one primitive, and one of them is of a sphere type. Very cool. Now, what happens if we come here and actually put a merge node, as in merging threads, okay? In the merge node, if we wire both the sphere 
that is made out of polygons and this sphere that is made out of a primitive and we display it we actually get both spheres i'm going to move this one a little bit to the left so that we can see both of them okay so now we have two spheres in a single mesh okay if we middle mouse on this you will notice that now we have 81 primitives 80 of them which are polygons and one of them which is a sphere okay so that's a very important thing to note for the difference okay you know just because you have primitive you can have a an amount of polygons an amount of spheres but all that those things are are just different types of primitives they're all really part of the same family okay some other examples of primitives is are actually for example a NURB sphere. So if I bring in a NURB sphere, now I have one primitive which is a NURB's surface. Okay? Whereas in the polygon sphere I have 80 primitives which is my 80 polygons. Now if I merge these together, you will notice that I have 82 primitives now, 80 polygons from the actual sphere, one NURB surface, in one sphere type primitive okay here is yet another example if we grab my polygon sphere or actually let's just go ahead and create a new one and I'm gonna turn it into polygons then I am going to use a VDB from polygons node okay uh, and what this operator does is that it, cre it grabs my polygon sphere and it generates a volume out of it okay so this is a volumetric primitive representation and if we middle mouse on this you will notice that i have one primitive which is a vdv volume okay with and here i even get information about the resolution of a volume in voxels so in this case it's 25 by 25 by 25 voxel grid with t to 7200 and two bottles okay if we merge the volume in here we can even go ahead and transform it up a little higher i now have a primitive here we'll move also this guy over to the right i now have a piece of geometry in houdini which is made out of 356 points 83 primitives, 554 vertices, because of all the uh, vertices on the actual polygons versus the nerves. And then I have 83 primitives, 80 of them which are polygons, one nerve surface, one sphere, and one volume VDB. Okay? The beautiful thing about this is that now you can start dealing with meshes that are very sophisticated. Okay? Say, for example, you can have a tree where the trunk is made out of uh, polygons for the most part, but some of the sub branches are made out of nerves and the actual leaves are made out of volumes. This is something that most applications don't support and it's probably one of the biggest strengths of Houdini, you know, which is the way how Houdini treats the, its data as juice data. Uh, the geometrical data that you see here is treated equally in between all of these different operations, okay? Making it very, uh, you know, a very powerful way of working. Okay. Okay. If we also look at the spreadsheet of the merge node where all these primitives are merging together, you will notice that I have my point positions, my vertices that I have from before, but then you will see that I have uh, all my primitives also listed here. Okay. One of them even has a name attribute, which is what uh, VDBs actually generate when they are, uh, the primitives are actually created. Okay? <clears throat> you will notice too that we have one more button here, which is detail. Detail refers actually to the whole shape geometry that we see here. Okay? It is a concept that we'll explore a bit later when we get into attributes, but it is important to note as one of the components that actually Houdini uses. Okay? Very cool. The beautiful thing too about this, uh, the way Houdini treats its primitives, is that 
for the first time in many years, I feel like I can actually use NURBS in a way that is meaningful. Uh, in Because of the very strong procedural nature of Houdini and my ability to be able to very quickly go from NURBS to polygons back to NURBS, say for example using a convert operation to convert uh, these NURBS surfaces into NURBS curves. Uh, or I mean, sorry, I mean into polygons. It makes it very easy at any point to be able to use any primitive representation in a way that actually is useful for uh, your process. Okay? So if you feel like you need to do something like such as hair, such as long, you know, soft branches, sometimes you may want to use a nerve surface, for example, instead of using a polygon surface, just because of the nature that nerve surfaces will give you, for example, UVs for free. Uh, so lots of very things to consider now that we know a little bit more about this. Okay, very cool. And that should be it for this one. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.